All right, what's up guys? Just gonna do another installment of Tools in Action. Got one for you. We're gonna be doing it with the uh, chassis ears. So I got it out. I got this 98 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Came in for a few issues, water pump, belt squeak, a uh, few things under the hood, but it's also got a suspension noise. I had uh, pulled the front drive shaft off to kind of isolate uh, universals. It does need a front drive shaft rebuild. So I got that off right now, getting ready to put it over on the parts counter and uh, rebuild the drive shafts, but I still got a front end noise. Um, I got some possibles of what I think it might be, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put the chassis on here, get this thing raised up, kind of show you guys you know, how I set these ears up so you can see the coolant leaking right there. Knock that water pump out. And, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and find this front end noise first. So go ahead and hook up these chassis ears, set you guys up and uh, show you guys kind of how these uh, how this tool is used so check it out guys right after this All right, guys, got this thing raised up. Here's underneath. There's that coolant leak. But mostly hearing it on the passenger side. So I figure we'll hook up. Maybe a lead up to the sway bar link. Hook one up to the knuckle. As long as there's no moving parts. See if it's coming out a bearing noise. Kind of what it maybe seems like. Maybe a bearing. Um, maybe I'll hook one up to uh, the strut. And uh, get this thing going. Take this thing for a test drive. I'm also hearing a, a, like a backing plate noise. Coming from this side, looks like a little bit of rust in there. You can kind of see it touching there. So I'll address that. But uh, this thing's got over 300,000 miles on it. So we'll get you guys set up. All right, guys, I got you set up. Got the mic. Pretty much grab the leads. I like to make sure I route them where there's no moving parts. So this first one, I'm just gonna clip to the sway bar up here. And then kind of route it around away from anything hot. We'll get this one up through the passenger side. Sometimes throw a few zip ties on there to make sure they stay in place, helps. So I'll throw a zip tie on that one. I'm basically just checking this side because most of the noise is coming from this side. I'll clip on to the, uh, to the spindle. That way it'll tell me if it's a bearing noise. So it's got a little bolt there. Route this one up. Throw a couple zip ties over here. It's set up. And then we'll do maybe one more. Um, we'll do one more on that. And we'll do both more. We'll do one on the upper ball joint and one on the lower. 
So we'll catch, let's catch this lower ball joint, maybe right there. Route this up and around. Like that. Another lead here. This one will clip onto the upper ball joint. Make sure it's secure and out of the way, not touching anything else. And this one will route around like so. Get a zip tie real quick. Got a couple zip ties. Throw a few zip ties on here, make sure they're routed safely. I got the brake hose here. I'll probably clip it to the brake hose. All right, that's good. These I'm gonna go up with. I'm hooked up over here. Just double check, make sure nothing's gonna touch. This one's good over there, not touching the tire. Looking good. Let me show you guys. You could kind of see where I got them clipped to. That one's for the spindle. I'll be able to catch the loudest noise on that channel. I got one on the lower ball joint bolt. I got one on the upper ball joint Zerk fitting. And then routed them down. Here's the one from the link. Route all the wires out of the way. Make sure they're not gonna get pinched or rub on anything. Let this thing down. Tie the wires up. Get you guys set up for that. So I pretty much threw another zip tie up there. It's clear of the wheel, nothing's touching. Got them up, just hung them on the mirror real quick. Let this thing down. Route those inside the window. And I'll show you guys how I plug in the box and all that, get this thing ready for a test drive. All right guys, so quick recap. Got them all clipped, routed up. Take the long end, I like to pass them in through the window. I also like to keep them routed around the, the mirror so there's no slack when you're driving. So I got these getting hooked on the inside. It's like that. Jump over here, grab the transmitter box and the headphones. Get all set up. All right, guys. So grab all the leads. Let me get you guys set down. Grab all the leads here. Pretty much start plugging them in, the channels. Doesn't really matter which channel you plug them into. You're basically looking for the noise. And then once you figure the noise, then you'll worry about the channel. There's channel two. We got four leads, so there'll be four channels. Channel three. Channel four. So that's all four of the channels. I'll be doing one through four on the test drive. Got them all plugged in. Plug in your headphones. Got the headphones plugged in. Pop them on. Go for a quick test drive. They sound like they're all connected. I hear them clicking. The ones that aren't connected won't click between channels. So let's get a quick test driving, guys.
I could almost already hear it. This guy's also got an exhaust leak. I'm kind of picking up. Channel one, I'm hearing a little something. I like to take the box and put it in my lap. Start off on channel one. And go through. I like the wire leads better than the wireless transmitters because if you lose a wireless transmitter, you just lost a $75 tool. At least if I lose a wire, I can always repair it, make a new wire, or just buy a wire. They're super cheap. So I definitely hear bearing noise though, and that's in channel one. We'll have to find out which one I put channel one on. Go to my little test driving spot back here. Definitely hear a bearing noise. So that's channel one. I don't know if you guys can pick that up. Let's see. If you guys are hearing that. But definitely hearing a bearing noise on channel one. Got this thing in my lap here. So that's channel one. Here's channel two. Channel two, the noise fades out a little bit. Channel three, kind of sway the wheel back and forth, see if you can get the noise to do it. Make a turn. Not really hearing anything on three. Channel four, hearing nothing on four either. Four is probably the link. But channel one for sure, guys. Channel one and two, we'll have to see what those were. And if they're close, we'll know that we're on the right track. I'm guessing this is a bad bearing or something. But definitely channel one, you can see. That's channel one there. Or that's channel two. Channel one, it gets even louder. So we'll pull this thing back into the shop check which one we got channel one and two lead on and that'll be our culprit all right guys so we got the truck pulled back into the shop I racked it real quick just stuck the rack arms under it I still left the leads plugged into the box because I didn't pay attention to what we clipped what to and all my leads are the same color you could put different color tape on here you know to get fast dying in the car but I usually like to pull it in and double check where I heard the most noise it was channel one and two so let's see what that is We've been plugged in to get this thing up in the air. Unclip these wires where I zip tied them. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to unplug one, channel one and I'm going to follow it back to where it goes. Pretty much untangle it, because i got to wrap these back up anyways. Go one at a time. So this is channel one here. Let's see what you guys set up underneath. Let's see where one is. the spindle guys so it definitely probably a bearing there's channel one and one's the one we put on the spindle itself to check the bearing for bearing noise and that's kind of what I had suspected anyways um, we got a loose loose bearing a loose bearing that's grinding and, and making knocking sounds at certain turns that's why I had disconnected the front drive shaft to kind of isolate it um, that's number one channel. Let's do channel two now. Channel two. Round it out. Let's see what's two? Probably upper ball joint. That's where you probably hear it the most. Tingle it. Yep, upper ball joint, guys. So that's where the noise would travel if it was the if it was the bearing. 
was the upper. The lower ball joint didn't hear anything, didn't hear any knocking over those sewer covers. Um, we just knew it didn't need, I knew it didn't need ball joints. I think we, we did them pretty recently, or he had them done pretty recently. So, but uh, that's a quick one. Let me get these wrapped up real quick. So, all right, guys, that was a quick tools in action on the Steelman chassis ears. Um, you guys seen in my last video, great little tool. Um, you know, definite time saver. I guess setting up the leads, you know, takes a little bit of time. But, you know, when you, you're quick, you're by yourself, or, you know, you want to get that quick confirmation to confirm, you know, something you already think is bad, just to hear it. You know, you could sometimes see that a part's loose, but sometimes you want to hear it too or isolate it in between a couple other things that are maybe close in parts. Um, but, you know, the test drive, like I said, channel one and two was definitely heard. Uh, channel one was the loudest. That was the one clipped onto the spindle itself which lead me to believe it was the, the bearing. Uh, channel, channel two was on the upper ball joint, which was also connected to the spindle. I was more or less listening for na knocking sound on channel two. Go ahead and give this guy a price on a bearing, getting a bearing done for him. Um, rebuilt that front drive shaft for him and everything's done. The guy should be taken care of. No, he should be gone for him. So, but quick tools in action for you guys. As always, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you ain't subscribed already. Like the video, leave a comment on the video, share the video, and we will catch you guys in the next one. Signing out.